Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. This is part three and probably the last part of my starting your campaign. I figured January, let's start some campaigns, right? Here we're going to talk a little bit about an adventure path type campaign. And when I say that, I don't mean playing an adventure path or buying a pre-made module, but when you have an idea, like an overall idea, a story, if you will, oh no, <laughs> that you want to tell and you want to create a campaign around it. So you want, you have this idea that there's going to be this evil Lord rising and the player characters are going to have to stop them, right? That's a good classic thing. Something's, you know, coming from the sky and the player characters have to figure a way to stop that from happening. An event is going to happen, whatever it is. And basically that's, you, you want to base the entire campaign around this idea. Now, of course, depending on your group, you definitely want to talk to them and let them know this is going to have some kind of overarching theme because the way we run this is going to be a little different than how we run, let's say, a sandbox. But how we build it is going to be similar in the sense that we're not going to do everything all at once. The way to approach this best, in my opinion, is to break it down into tiers. That is to say, and this is not something new, this was early D&D, &D, we saw this modules for first to third level, fourth to seventh level, you know, seventh to tenth level, whatever. And that's how we're going to do this. We're going to think to ourselves, okay, we have a grand idea, right? The cult of Orcus is waiting for this date that's going to come, let's say in a year. And at this date, they're going to be able to raise Orcus and the whole world's going to become undead because for some reason they think that's a good thing. And what they need to do is certain things. They need to dig out some old monuments. They need to find some magic items. They need to you know, get so many sacrifices. We can think of all the terrible things that these cults will do. Some of them really will call it ground level things. You know, in other words, low level. Some of them are high level things like uh, politics and, and maybe even armies, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to think, okay, make up a list of all those things that you think might be be relevant, but then say, all right, that's all high level. Let's look at some low level stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into tiers. We're going to think of this as, let's say we want to go to 12th level and we want to have four sections to this. And we're going to go one to three, four to six. So, you know, some overlap there, <laughs> right? And we're going to go like that all the way to the end. The PCs are going to be about 12th level. And that's when this date's going to happen. And maybe there's going to be a huge confrontation or maybe not, right? Depending on what they do to stop it. And what we'll do is we'll just start with the beginning. Well, we're going to start with the end of the beginning. Whenever we're making any kind of adventure that's got kind of some kind of a finishing thing, like you're going to kill Strahd, what you need to do is start there. We need to decide at the end of this third level, what is a good opponent, task, thing, obstacle to overcome for a third level party. And we're going to say, that's the thing, right? This is ultimately where they're going to end up. They're going to end up confronting this, this cabal of uh, high priests that are have been digging in this site and whatever, and they need to stop them and destroy this idol or whatever. And whatever that is that you need to do, boom. All right, that's where we're going to end this. And ultimately, the player characters are going to get there. Now, again, that could sound railroady, but this is why we talk to our players ahead of time and we make sure that they're on board with this is going to be this type of campaign. We're not going to force them, their actions individually, but ultimately this is the bad guy, right? So when we start playing and you throw out the hints of things, they don't just go the other way and start talking to some random NPC, right? They kind of follow along. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we're going to go, let's break this down into chunks of how the PCs would ultimately find this thing. Right. So we break it down, we break it down, we break it down, and maybe we're going to have four or five adventures, six. It depends on the system you're running and how fast you want people to level up. Generally speaking, in most games at lower levels, you level up quicker. So let's say because we're doing milestones this is going to be you're planning on having them level every two to three sessions. So maybe this is a six to ten session uh, arc, if you will. And what we're going to, obviously this is not set in stone, but you're going to have some ideas. So you want to create chunks of things that can happen, right? That'll lead them through there all the ways down to what is the inciting thing. Maybe the inciting event is that they see a star fall from the sky, right? And that's also a sign 
that the Orcas people were looking for. So when they go to investigate it, they have their first confrontation with these cultists who are doing something and we get some hint of what's going on. So at that point, they're not even necessarily fighting the cultists, right? They're both trying to get whatever cool thing this fell from the sky, right? And from there, that can create the story as it moves forward. What we want to do here is we want to set ourselves up so that each step of the story starts to reveal what might be going on. And we also want to set the ultimate bad guy, if you will, against the PCs. That is, we need to set the PCs up so that their goals are the opposite of what the cultists are. And how do we do that? We need to have PC buy-in. This is one of those types of campaigns where your backstories and your interactions with the PCs before it starts, session zero, all that is super important. In a sandbox campaign, you know, the PCs can kind of be anything. Here, you're going to want to make sure they have some kind of connection. Because in order to make this work, especially at lower levels, you're going to want to have the events be something that happens locally, right? So maybe the PCs are residents of this area, and when this thing falls from the sky, now this cult is blocking off this area, and the PCs, it, well, the village and the people that they love and the families and everything else aren't getting some of the supply that they used to have. You know, again, we're setting a conflict between the PCs and these Orcas people. The conflict isn't, oh, they're the evil Orcas cult and we have to stop them. The conflict is personal at this level. At low level, the conflict has to be personal. This is how you're going to keep your PCs long term. You've got to get them dug in and them being hired to kill some bad guys is not going to dig them in. Make the early stuff really, really personal. In an ideal world, the entire campaign will feel personal, but that will happen through the players playing, right? In the beginning, we need to craft it a little bit tighter. We need to start with backstories, start with something so they know that they're involved here. None of the, I'm a loner with no family, with that's not going to work in like the setup that I made. That might work in some setups, right? It really depends on what it is. And what we want to do is make it so that the PCs have a reason to get involved. And it doesn't have to be obvious that they want to get involved with, again, stopping the cult of Orcus. It could just be they want to stop these people that are doing a thing. Maybe the cult is hiring bandits or riling up the hobgoblin, local hobgoblins, to make attacks on caravans. And the PCs are merchants or they're caravan guards. And that's how they get connected. And obviously, a sense of adventure, greed, all those other things come to play. You'll, you know, you'll make it so that your players are going to want to be involved beyond that. But we want to definitely start with something that is localized and personal that will roll over more and more and bring them, discover, you know, peel the onion back, if you will, until they come to this first encounter that should, at that point, at the end of this tier, they should know this is what's happening. They should get that information that Orcus is coming unless something happens. It's going to leave them with a bit of a cliffhanger, but also a sense of success because they will have stopped this part of the cult's plan. So a few things we want to consider here, and this is true of many campaigns, is we want to establish up front certain recurring themes. Okay, so in this case, we're talking about these cults, right? So maybe before this thing even falls out of the sky, we have a session or two where the PCs see these cults moving in and they hear rumors about problems. Maybe people are going missing or they're doing something, right? They're, they're creating some issue. Maybe they even hire the PCs for something in the beginning, right? So that they, and then the PCs kind of over here and see some things that aren't so cool and that, or maybe they're recruited. They're trying to recruit the PCs. Anything like that can work. We want them to be introduced to these cults and then throughout the campaign, make sure they keep coming back. Even when the PC is a higher level and a handful of cultists aren't going to be a challenge, they'll see them. They'll see camps of them. They'll see areas. They'll see their flags. They'll have people reference them. This is one of the things about a, a path. We need to make sure it stays connected. In a sandbox, they might encounter something early on and then never see it again. But in these kind of things, in order to keep it tight, we've got to constantly be reinforcing our themes. Another thing that's really important is that when we think of our main threat, so let's take Curse of Strahd to be a good example or a bad example, in my, my opinion. Curse of Strahd is one bad guy that you need to kill at the end of whatever it is, 12th level. This to me is not as interesting as some kind of a rising threat that's coming in the future that if you kill or defeat or arrest or take out that one person, it's still going to come. 
one single person gone does not remove the threat. This helps make it feel more real because that's truly how it is generally in life, right? There's not just one person that if you wipe them out, all of a sudden the threat's gone. Generally, cults build up. They have multiple leaders. They've got, you know, if they're if you're, it's a war and you're, you know, there's a country, it's a, taking one general out doesn't stop the whole war, right? This is not how it works, even in high fantasy. So we want to create a threat that taking out a single individual isn't going to end it. It's not one big boss at the end. Although maybe in the end, there's somebody who's really orchestrating this, but they're not going to be like some super powered, you know, mecha warrior that you're going to have to fight some, you know, kaiju. They're going to, they're going to be smart and they're going to be using their resources and the threat's going to be spread out all over. This is going to allow the campaign to feel natural as opposed to feel enforced. Another thing we're going to use in this style of campaign that I don't normally use is a little bit more hard framing. So hard framing is when we effectively start the players. I mean, sometimes I use it for one shots. Start the players at the dungeon is the simplest way to say it. But we can use hard framing for any of these kind of things, right? If we've already discussed in session zero that the players are these kind of people that do this kind of thing that are here, that are car caravan guards or whatever, let's just take that. You've already established they're caravan guards. They've been on, you know, the extra patrols because of all these raids that have been happening. You can literally just start with them guarding a caravan. You don't have to start the tavern where they get offered a job with a hard frame to the caravan. When that part of it's over, maybe that session where they kind of like encounter some information, they, they get, you know, they get attacked, they run off the enemies, they chase them down, they, they question some of them and the session ends. You don't necessarily have to pick back up with them on the road with the caravan again. You can just jump hard frame to the next session okay, you've been in town a week. The The authorities have questioned this cultist and they're not saying much, but they suspect blah, blah, blah. And that could lead to the next adventure. Now, obviously, if you have a bunch of lawful characters, you don't hard frame that they just finished murdering somebody in the street, right? You, that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. But you don't have to run through half a session of them accepting quests constantly when they know that this is basically what they're doing here. You don't want to force the characters to do something, but at the same time, if they're already on the move, you don't have to play all of it out either. We can skip over parts of the stuff that we normally would play out in other types of campaigns. One of the downsides to this type of campaign is that because the PCs are so personally involved and because it is kind of you're we're getting them dug in at the beginning, if the PCs themselves, the players, let's say you lose a player because of work or time or whatever, or a PC dies... It can be hard to, like, why is brand new PC in, you know involved here? So we do want to think about that. And that's one reason why doing this in chunks works really well. You can usually get, in my experience, a couple of month commitment from people that are willing to commit to anything, right? But it's hard to get a year. A lot of people will say they'll do a year, but it can be difficult. You hear stories over and over again. So what's nice about doing it in sections is that if we put a nice bow on the end of each section, when we start the next one, new characters could be brought in. You could start with all new characters, even depending on how you ended the first one, but it's nice to have some recurring PCs. While these types of linear campaigns aren't my go-to for kind of D&D type things, they are something I've used in sci-fi and modern quite a bit. They can work really well for those kind of games. They can also work well for D&D, obviously. You see all these adventure paths. If you are the kind of person that has these grand ideas, this might be the way to go. But definitely take the advice of doing it in chunks. I've talked to many people who had these grand ideas for this 1 to 20 campaign, and they're just frustrated because they can't get it finished. The players don't stick around. People don't seem motivated. It's not going the way they thought. Well, of course not. You can't predict two years worth of play. The game is meant to shift and adjust. If you do it in chunks you can be a little bit more linear without it feeling so forced. Let me know if you like to run stuff like this. Have you run any of the like, official Adventure Path books or have you written your own Adventure Paths? I'd love to know about it in the comments below, so go ahead and let me know. <laughs> also, check the description. You'll find a link to my Discord down there where we discuss all kinds of gaming topics and my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. I'll talk to you soon.